Okay, moving on to the next segment of today's show, I wanted to talk a little bit about Dwayne Haskins and the Washington football team with their announcement coming this week that Kyle Allen will be taking over as the starting quarterback for their week five home game against the Los Angeles Rams, and that will be moving Dwayne Haskins to the bench. And I have a lot of things I want to say about this, but the number one thing I'll say is this, and the number one argument I want to make regarding this whole situation is this, that... Dwayne Haskins got a raw deal, and I don't really think there's any other way to say it. You know, when you look at the history of the Washington football team and everything that has gone on there over the last uh, 20 years, you know, one thing really kind of remains constant. If you're a young quarterback there that wants to do uh, that wants to do well, going to Washington and being the starting quarterback of the Washington football team is never really the best way to go because odds are if you end up in Washington, your football career is not going to end up well. And now after 11 starts, and just 13 appearances for 13 months. That whole you know timeline lasted 13 months from when Dwayne Haskins was drafted to now and all that. Dwayne Haskins is now the number three quarterback in Washington after fewer than 350 pass attempts while playing under three coaches all since being drafted 15th overall just se- just 16 months ago. And I remember talking on this podcast last year at this time about how I think Washington could possibly pull in Arizona and do exactly what they did um, with uh, you know Josh Rosen to Dwayne Haskins. And I thought, okay, maybe that would be the case if uh, Washington had the number one overall pick. Maybe that would be the case if they you know really wanted Joe Burrow or if it was the draft like this year and they got Trevor Lawrence. But no, they ultimately did not end up doing that. They drafted Chase Young young with the number two overall pick. And I remember at the time uh, of the draft this past offseason, originally I said, look, if Washington doesn't believe that Dwayne Haskins is the answer, that's fine. Um, But then just take, you know, whatever quarterback you do think is the answer, because in the NFL, there's really no room at all to be wasting any time at all. And they ended up taking Chase Young from Ohio State with Joe Burrow going number one to the Cincinnati Bengals. And obviously, Chase Young is a freak. He was probably the best defensive player in college football last year. So no one really, you know, got on Washington for the pick. Here is what I was confused by. With Washington passing on Justin Herbert with that number two pick, with Washington passing on Tua Tagovailoa with that number two pick, basically what that told me from their management was, okay, they're willing to give Dwayne Haskins a chance and they believe in this guy. They drafted this guy last year. He obviously wasn't very good during his rookie year, albeit in a pretty, you know, unfair opportunity. And, um, you know, they drafted Chase Young. And this season, Haskins was obviously announced the starting quarterback. And I just think that after four games, moving him to the bench is just not really fair to him. And it's not really giving him a fair shot. And once again, it's sending your organization back. Going back to the Arizona Cardinals example I mentioned a little bit before, they at least gave Josh Rosen nearly 400 pass attempts before they gave up on him a year after drafting him number 10 overall. While the Washington football team got, uh, you know, they found a way to top that. Haskins was a player caught up in an organization that, to be honest, when you look at their track record, just shows you a lot of failure. And when it comes to quarterbacks, the same thing could be said. He was a young passer without really any real chance to succeed, without anyone left in the building who was truly invested in his success or gave much of a damn about catering to what he did best. You see around the National Football League these days, I talk about it all the time on this show. When you look at a lot of the other successful coaches around the National Football League these days, one thing that I've realized that they all have in common is that they all do a really good job job in putting their young quarterbacks in a position to succeed, whether it's Sean McDermott in Buffalo and everything that he's been able to do with Josh Allen, Kyle Shanahan in San Francisco helping out with all the guys in motion and stuff like that, Um, Sean uh, McVay with Jared Goff and everything that he was able to do. But unfortunately, when you look at Washington, once again, I just don't think they put him in a fair situation at all. And when you look at the uh, Dwayne Haskins and what his career could possibly look like, you know, next year, I don't really know if I could even see him being a member of this Washington football team, because really, by this move, they just signaled they gave up on him. And I totally understand. Dwayne Haskins has some blemishes. 
He isn't perfect. He's far from it. He's 23 and has some real maturity issues uh, to get over. But the problem is, I think there are many other young players in the NFL that have very similar issues that they need to get uh that they need to get over and his work habits may be a thing in progress but he was also a product of, of his environment I think the fact that this guy has had three different coaches in three different years you know I don't necessarily know if that's fair to just you know bench a guy with you know given those three things after only 13 games uh, given his play he also only played about one big time uh, season full of college football and was drafted by the team that came this close to firing its offensive minded head coach Jay Gruden before Haskins had ever even taken a snap in the NFL. So of course, Jay Gruden is finally put out of his misery five games into the 2019 season, uh, and that's ultimately when Haskins got the main job. I don't understand why Jay Gruden never gave you know, Dwayne Haskins, a real opportunity. Oh, wait, I know why. Probably because if he did, he knew he was going to get fired eventually. And it's okay. You know, one thing that I think a lot of NFL teams and coaches really need to start realizing these days, right, is that just because you take a quarterback in the first round, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to throw him in right away. I think the Miami Dolphins are doing a really good job with that, and Tua Tagovailoa. I think right now, Miami realizes that given the current state of their offensive line, if they put Tua in, that just would not be good for his development at all. And I think last year, Washington just deciding to bring back Jay Gruden in the first place, when they ultimately knew that him being the head coach there wasn't going to work, that set Dwayne Haskins back a while. I think you could say the same thing about the Jets and Sam Darnold. We've spoken uh, about that a little bit on the show over the last couple weeks, that when Sam Darnold uh, was the quarterback and the Jets decided to bring in Adam Gaze, that was a move that just ended up setting not only Sam Darnold back, but the rest of the Jets franchise back for a year or two because they're just wasting everyone's time. And I think that's what Washington did with Jay Gruden in last year. So now you fast forward to this year, um, Washington decides to bring in Ron Rivera, who I think uh, we could all agree that he's a qualified coach. This is a guy that brought the Carolina Panthers to the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, and he lost his job. And, you know, he is, I believe, one of the 32 best coaches in the NFL. He deserved to get this job. But the problem is he was not the same coach. And, you know, the GM, Bruce Allen, he's no longer there as well. Those were not the regime or the, uh, Rivera was not part of the regime that brought in Dwayne Haskins. So I think it's much easier for a guy like Ron Rivera to come in and say, all right, we weren't the ones that drafted this guy. We have nothing you know, attached to him. We have nothing invested in him, or at least my regime doesn't. So it would be much easier for a coach like Ron Rivera to move on from Dwayne Haskins, especially for a guy that he coached in Carolina last year in Kyle Allen. And I just don't think with Kyle Allen as the starting quarterback that the Washington football team as a franchise is going, you know, anywhere, anytime, any, any, anytime soon. But the thing that's interesting for me with this whole new system in Washington is that they really did not a lot of things at all to help out Dwayne Haskins. And neither did the previous regime. You know, they brought in Terry McLaurin, who was a third round pick at wide receiver, who had, you know, a surprisingly very nice season for Washington last year. But I think he exceeded everyone's expectations. And I think the same thing could be said about Antonio Gibson, the young running back they drafted this year from the University of Memphis. He's been a nice surprise, but, you know, He's a, 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 I mean, a surprise for a rookie, you know, fourth round pick. He's not really a game changer yet in his career. And plus you throw the pandemic into the mix. I don't understand why Washington and their organization would kind of let Ron Rivera do this and the, the, you know, direction he's bringing this in because they're sitting down Dwayne Haskins for a kid in Kyle Allen, a guy who was a benefactor of uh, Scott Turner, who was the Carolina Panthers offensive coordinator last season. He knows exactly what to do while playing under Ron Rivera, which explains why three games into his tenure under Ron Rivera's coaching staff, Haskins 
Wiggins was already called out by his head coach and put in public notice about potentially losing his job. I think for me, that was the number one problem here. And now when Washington gets smacked by Baltimore on Sunday, it's going to be easier for Ron Rivera to just come out and say, all right, Kyle Allen's our starting quarterback. Washington's schedule gets much, much easier over the next uh, upcoming weeks. So it's going to be much easier for Ron Rivera to, you know, say, all right, Kyle Allen is our starting quarterback. It was very easy for Ron Rivera, I think, to say that uh, about Dwayne Haskins, calling him out about playing better or losing his job. It's very easy for Ron Rivera to say that the week before they play Baltimore and then this upcoming week, not like the Rams are, you know, any, any not like the Rams are an easy matchup for Washington, but I think it, they have a much real, much better realistic shot of winning that game at home compared to beating a team uh, like the Baltimore Ravens at home. And once again, if the Washington football team really didn't believe in Dwayne Haskins that much, they should have t- they should have taken a quarterback with the number two pick in the draft. We can go ahead and scapegoat the quarterback and make that change. You already warned everyone might be coming, but it's just shocking how the public didn't bring out the best in a kid who, besides the owner, you know, no one has seemed to bother to take an interest in him since he got to town. And I think in a reality in which this staff sure as hell seems to have made up its mind a long time ago that Kyle Allen was going to get a pretty uh, good shot to be the starting quarterback here, um, that's a big problem. Washington could have gotten a guy like Cam Newton or Andy Dalton or Jameis Winston on the free agent market. And I just think when you look at Dwayne Haskins, this is a guy that so far this season has better numbers than Daniel Jones, who the Giants took nine spots ahead of him. But no one has really, you know, you know, thrown Daniel Jones, you know, into the clock or into perspective uh, so far this season. And I just don't think Dwayne Haskins has really been given a fair opportunity when it comes to the way this Washington football team uh, has handled this. And Kyle Allen last year, his numbers in Ron Rivera's system were good because he had a guy like Christian McCaffrey, DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel, Greg Olson, guys that are all super explosive. I don't necessarily know if Kyle Allen's going to be able to do that same thing uh, that uh, in Washington this year, given the you know current mix of their team. So I think it's all about how the league works and who gets second and third chances, who barely gets one, no matter how high they're drafted. You know, circumstances matter. I think we could all agree on that. Perhaps Dwayne Haskins' career is destined to continue Josh Rosen's in more ways than one. But there were larger forces at work in both being discarded so quickly, and there are reasons why the Washington football team just really hasn't had a quarterback over the last 20 years. And I don't think it's that big of a coincidence when you look at their track record and what happened with Dwayne Haskins here, what occurred, everything that went down. I don't think it's that big of a coincidence to say, all right, maybe Washington is a little bit at fault for Dwayne Haskins and really the demise of his 13th month stint as the quarterback of the Washington football team.